And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought my son to thee, having a dumb spirit, who, who wheresoever he taketh him, dasheth him, and he foameth and gnashes with the teeth and pineth away. And I spoke to thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. Who answering them said, O incredulous generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him. And when he had seen him, immediately the spirit troubled him. And being thrown down upon the ground, he rolled about foaming. And he asked his father, How long time is it since this hath happened unto him? But he said, From his infancy. Wow. Hmm. And oftentimes hath he cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, help us, having compassion on us. And Jesus saith to, saith to him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And immediately the father, the boy, crying out with tears, said, I do believe, O Lord, help my unbelief. God, it's a powerful story. And when Jesus saw the multitude running together, he threatened the unclean spirit, saying to him, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command thee, get out of him, and enter not any more unto him. And crying out and greatly tearing, tearing him, he went, uh, he went out of him, and he became as dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus, taking him by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples secretly asked him, Why could we not cast him out? And he said to them, This kind can go out by nothing but by prayer and by fasting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, to the ages of ages. Amen. Um. I don't often like to get too personal uh, with my Bible studies, right? Um, but my daughter, uh, a couple years ago, she um, she went mute on us, right? She has autism, and she went mute on us, and um, she stopped talking, and she um, uh, was catatonic, right? Um she got very, very sick. She went to the psychiatric hospital. She's a little girl. She was only seven. That was she seven or was she eight? She was seven. She was seven. So it's been a couple of years from now. But you know, we continued to pray with her. We continued to uh, we were fasting because it was during Lent. You know, um, and um, uh, you know, during Easter, um, uh, during Pascha, you know. She, uh, um, uh, you know, we, we, we had, you know, Easter eggs around the hospital and she would go and she would pick up the Easter eggs and she would have fun a little bit, you know, uh, we were singing Christ is risen, you know, in the hospital and things. Um, but you know, there's some days where she was okay. And then some days when she was really, really not doing well. Um, and one day. Um, she tells the nurse, right? Um, she tells the nurse, uh, or actually, not, it's not just the nurse, it's actually the doctors. You have the, you have the whole doctors, all of them, right? She had a whole team. She had psychiatrists and neur neurologists and uh, nurses. And uh, then she had, not, in addition to nurses, she had, um, uh, what do you call them, Danielle? Care workers, AIDS you know, AIDS, AIDS, you know what I mean? And, um, uh, you know, she says, St. Patrick is with you. She says, St. Patrick is behind you. <clears throat> and um, and after that, she starts getting better. And uh, she's not, you know, ever really completely better. But then after that, we went to uh, Florida. And um, uh, we had been, you know, beside our mind, basically, because the, the doctors uh, were didn't quite know what to do with her because most of the drugs that are, uh, given for this, you know, they're meant for adults. They're not meant for little children, you know, and some of the drugs are making her more catatonic. Um, and they were, they were making the problem worse instead of better. <laughs> when they determined that she was no longer a threat to herself or to others, right? She was no longer a threat to herself. They released her, even though she wasn't really doing much better. We took her to Florida and, um, there is a priest in Florida who is known uh, in Punta Gorda um, of having the gift of healing. And, um, and, you know, he doesn't go around saying, Oh, I have the gift of healing, but he has, he has a reputation that when sick people come to him and uh, he prays for them, that they get better. And um, 
we uh so my and we didn't go just there for that right but my i have a friend of mine who lives in florida he was a mentor of mine and um we went there and we brought my daughter um to florida and the priest visited our 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 home or not our home but our friend's home and he prayed for my daughter and very soon after that my daughter was fine and now she's well. My daughter is well. Um, praise God. She's doing wonderfully. She's in school. Um, and I see this. Um, oh, Lord have mercy. I see this man's cry. You know, I believe. Help my unbelief. I believe. Help my unbelief. If you want to increase in faith, the source of faith is God. God is the source of faith. Faith is a gift from God. And um, if you can manage to have some faith, right, God is able to increase that faith. But you need to believe. You need to believe. You know, you need to have a measure of trust in the Lord. And he can take that trust and he can multiply it. He can increase your trust. <sighs> All right. Sorry. I am. Um, uh, Lord have mercy. All right. Give me a second. I'm sorry. Give me a second. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I got a little emotional there, but um, uh, the story, uh, uh, sto the story has taken on more meaning to me. 